Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the third lecture of the MOOC sponsored course on sociological perspectives on modernity. In the second lecture, in the last lecture, we have discussed the nature of sociological theory. I mean sociological theory consists of perspectives on the nature of the social world. When I say the nature of the social world, they do not, I mean it does not refer to the laws of society, rather the nature of the social world represents concepts, ideas and perspectives which are transferable from one context to another making a relevant distinction between substantive concepts on the one hand and formal concepts on the other. What are substantive concepts? No substantive concepts are derived from the specific contexts, particular contexts, whereas formal concept, con concepts can mediate between specific contexts on the one hand and general contexts on the other. Uh, I mean, I mean, I refer to uh, Glaser and Strauss's works here because because what we are interested in is the social, the interactive and the communicable. Okay? Uh, I mean these are statements uh, when we say nature of the social world, I mean statements about the social world, uh, uh, they are not isolated categories. Okay? They are very much embedded in our society, in our culture and so on. Okay? Then we have, we have discussed uh, uh, ontology. I mean the question of the nature, I mean what is being, what is existing, which leads on to methodology, I mean the question of how we can come to know it. Okay? And, and, and the method that we, we used, we have used till now, that is the method of sociological imagination by C. Wright Mills. Uh, and, and when we, when we relate it to these ontological questions, what is being, what is existing, okay. it leads us to reflect on Marx's materialist conception of history. Uh, I mean, it is not the consciousness of men that determines their being, but on the contrary, their being that determines their consciousness. I mean, matter is prior to the formation of ideas. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then, then we discussed uh, uh, the, the layout how, how we are going to approach the critical modernist paradigm in sociology or in sort uh, critical modernity. Okay? Uh, this is then 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 let us let us discuss uh, 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 in, in, in today's lecture uh, we are going to discuss uh, the critical themes or critical set of ideas, uh, which are very much embedded in the modernist paradigm in sociology. Okay. I, have, I, have, I have said a few things about sociological theory and also a few things about, about the critical modernist paradigm in sociology. I mentioned, I mentioned uh, the, 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 the central uh, themes, central pillars of critical modernity. Uh, uh, in the very beginning, okay. they are holism or totality, reflexivity, rationality, and social movements. Okay. But, but, but without really saying adequately about them, what I want to try and do now is, is 
uh, is uh, to, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do I'm trying to provide an outline uh, of of critical modernism as a set of ideas as a set of themes okay let us let us let us start with start with holism or totality i mean i mean what is holism or totality that we have discussed that society as the object of knowledge or or or, or more precisely um, uh, uh, the idea of society as a unit which can be characterized as belonging to a particular uh, type and as determined by its own internal logics. Okay. Now, what we will see? Okay. I mean the, the initial and ultimately central idea of sociological modernism is that of holism or totality of society as the object of knowledge or more precisely the idea of society as a unit, as a single unit, which can be characterized as belonging to a particular type uh, and as determined by its own internal logics. Then what do we mean by a particular type? What is that type? Okay. The type which contemporary societies are seen as belonging to um, in this approach is generally a historical one. Okay. That is to say, contemporary societies are primarily characterized historically as modern and in contrast to pre-modern societies. The, the internal logics of such, such societies presumably lead us, okay, if, if they lead anywhere at all of course, okay, either to uh, the complete fulfillment of modernism or to its transcendence okay if it is if 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 i mean there are two two uh, dimensions that we can look at one is complete fulfillment of modernity okay uh, uh, and and secondly uh, uh, it may it may lead us to to its to to uh, complete transcendence okay no, it will not be a uh, complete fulfillment of modernity that okay okay at the at, i mean in other words uh, at the end of the road is either a totalized version of modernity okay uh, on the one hand and and a new social form on the other okay this is very important modernity in 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 other words, is a is a component part of the object of sociology, uh, and and it is in this sense that that we are told that sociology is preeminently the study of modern societies, um, uh, their emergence and development. Sociology, I mean, in this paradigm, is preeminently historical sociology. Okay, when I say it is preeminently historical sociology. Uh, in fact, C. Wright Mills dwelt much on 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 uh, on historical sociology in his book, The Sociological Imagination. If you look at the first uh, part, I mean the promise, the first section, okay, <coughs> the promise. I mean he has dwelt much on on um, he has dwelt much upon historical sociology, okay. Uh, I mean. But, but there are other components which need equal stress. Society is seen as a whole. What does it mean? Not that it cannot be subdivided or there would be little enough to say. It, it, when I say society is seen as a whole in terms of historical sociology, okay, I, mean, I mean it implies that the overriding characteristic of society is its relational nature one element is related to another or the elements of society are in fact these relationships for example power communication exploitation and so on okay we might we might think of these relationships in a static way as a system of interactions connecting an entire society at at a at a given point of time 
ever at a given point in time. We are likely to describe, uh, I mean <coughs> we are likely to um, describe such a system as a structure or we might think of these uh, relationships in a historical sense as a series of processes uh, which interact with one another and link a society to itself over time and across space. In either case, it is these interactions, I mean the idea of society as composed not of units, but of relationships. When we talk about society, individual and so on, they are not units of study, rather we, we are trying to uh, um, dwell upon the kind of relationships that they forge, which enables us to think of society as a whole. Okay? In either case, we are likely to explain social change in terms of the internal logics of these systems or structures or processes. But all of this uh, uh, implies a concept of the social, whether or not this is the word used or we shall see that culture, politics, economics uh, are often transferred uh, uh, onto the social. That is to say, they are given the same extension and range of explanatory power that we associate with the concept of the social. The concept is itself uh, a characteristically modern one and as sociology is a modern activity, okay, uh, uh, the concept, uh, this concept uh, is also characteristically a uh, sociological one. Okay. If you, if you look at this, it is, it is not only characteristically a modern one, but also characteristically a sociological one. It is also one which, which, which most discussions of sociology uh, uh, find difficult to uh, explain. What I want to suggest here, what I uh, 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 what I want to uh, uh, suggest here is that the reason for this that the social is coextensive with sociology, so that there is a bootstrap problem or a paradigm shift. I mean, paradigms also make changes. I mean, we we we, uh, we tend to witness shifts in paradigms. Okay, I mean, I mean, this this is what I want to suggest. I mean, the reason for this is that uh, uh, the social is coextensive with sociology, so that there is a uh, paradigm shift involved here. Properly understood, however, the issue is not so much to define the nature of the social, uh, because, because that is a problem within individual theories. Okay? It is to define the scope of the theoretical blank which specific concepts of the social are to fill. This blank then is clearly that of totality or, 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 the, or the social whole. Okay? I mean the social precisely the, uh, the social is precisely that which, which includes and integrates all fields of human activity from religion to politics, from household to literature and so on. It will then not uh, surprise us that we sometimes find these individual fields being generalized to explain the totality or that we occasionally find the social uh, becoming a residual category of that which cannot be handled by the concepts of the other humanities or social sciences. It is characteristic of sociology in other words, not to be satisfied with concepts and theories which leave blanks or fields to, to which they cannot be applied. And, and uh, I mean uh, what I refer to here is, is, that, um, uh, is that an ideal sociological theory would be a theory of everything or at least, at least uh, of at least a theory of the totality of shared human experiences. And there are strong arguments to suggest that 
the two are identical okay uh, uh, we'll 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 get into this 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 the, these debates on on totality or or the social whole i mean a little further i mean when we when we say it 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 it, it uh, an ideal sociological theory would be a theory of everything okay uh, or at least the 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 the, to, the, the to, or at least the sociological theory must be a theory of 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 totality uh, of of sad human experiences when i say sad human experiences our experiences vis-a-vis -vis in relation to uh, other people's experiences and there are strong arguments to suggest that the two are identical we we must uh, the what what we have discussed in holism or totality that 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 um, that uh, holism or totality suggests uh, or or refers to the idea that uh, that society is treated as the object of knowledge or more precisely the idea of society as a single unit which can be characterized as belonging to a particular type and, and as determined by its own internal logics i mean the type is generally a historical one okay historically conditioned okay i mean on the basis of which we say contemporary societies are primarily characterized historically as as modern in contrast to pre modern societies okay and the internal logics when we say i mean internal logics of contemporary uh, societies presumably lead us either to the complete fulfillment of modernism if if it if it leads us to uh, uh, the complete fulfillment of modernism then it leads us to a totalized version of modernity and if it leads us to, if the internal logics lead us to uh, its transcendence okay i mean contemporary societies uh, 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 undergo transcendence then a new social form is arrived at mm. I mean, I mean, modernity in this sense is a component part of the object of sociology, preeminently the study of modern societies. When I say study of modern societies, I must look at uh, the way modern societies have emerged and developed over over a period of time. When I say uh, the the emergence and development of modern societies, I I refer to uh, a subdiscipline within sociology that is historical sociology. okay i mean society is seen as a whole the, i mean when i say society is seen as a whole i mean the overriding characteristic of society is its relational nature one one element is related to another or the elements of society are in fact these relationships for example power communication exploitation and so on and this concept is itself uh, a characteristically modern one and therefore a characteristically Uh, uh, sociological one. Then, then, then we we uh, then what we what we have discussed the social, I mean totality or the social whole. The the social includes and integrates all fields of human activity, uh, ranging from religion to politics, from housework to literature and so on. I mean it 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 uh, it takes two forms. This this this. When I say the social includes and integrates uh, all fields of human. activity and creativity i mean generalization of individual fields to explain the totality and secondly the social as a residual category then then if i say residual category of of that which which cannot be handled by the concepts of the other humanities and social sciences now uh, it is characteristic of sociology in other words uh, not to be satisfied with concepts and theories which leave blanks or fields uh uh to which they cannot be applied and an ideal sociological theory would be a theory of everything or at least a theory of the totality of shared human experiences our experiences vis-a-vis -vis other people's experiences and the, uh, and and from 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 here from holism or totality we are going to going to uh move on to uh uh, uh, uh reflexivity okay now when we discuss reflexivity the first element of such paradigm then is a is a totalizing approach to the social 
Okay. When I say totalizing approach to the social, this then uh, implies as I have suggested a methodology okay, which is a, uh, a reflexive one in the in the I mean I mean uh, I mean in the in the modernist paradigm in the critical modernist paradigm this methodology is primarily a reflexive one okay uh, I mean it implies that uh, whatever assumptions that we make about the nature of other human beings experience and knowledge needs ceteris paribus to be applied to ourselves. When I say I mean ceteris paribus I mean uh, it means uh, other things remaining constant. Okay? I mean when, when we say um, uh, this, this uh, in the modernist paradigm this methodology is primarily a reflexive one. Okay? It implies that whatever assumptions uh, we make about the nature of other human beings experience and knowledge needs okay, uh, other things remaining constant okay, to be applied to ourselves. In this sense sociologists are reflexive social actors because we are engaged in a continuous circle of thinking about society then thinking about our own thought as conditioned by our um, social beings, then thinking about so society once more uh, with the social relativity of our knowledge in mind. Okay. This is very important. If we can be, if we can be, um, then, then what we have to do as, as sociologists who are reflexive social actors, okay. at least three things. Uh, please keep in mind. I, I mean first we are engaged in a continuous circle of thinking about society and its constituents and its relationship with individuals okay? and then thinking secondly then thinking about our own thought, our own thinking as conditioned, as conditioned by our uh, social existence and thirdly then thinking about society once again with the social relativity of our knowledge in own knowledge in mind. Okay? Because our knowledge is also uh, conditioned by social relativity. Okay? Our knowledge is also not absolute. Okay? Uh, our knowledge is absolute was a pre-modern thinking or it was a part of pre-modern thinking, but our knowledge is conditioned by uh, social historic and historical relativity is a modernist control of or uh, uh, is a modernist control of of the way we treat ourselves as reflexive social actors okay and and if we can be reflexive social actors okay um, however it follows that others can be too to reflexive social actors and sociology is itself one of the key means by which reflexivity is imported into society. Okay? This is dramatically visible uh, in, in authors like Montesquieu and, uh, and Marx, uh, uh, whose ideas enter into the political and cultural self understanding of whole societies. Okay? Uh, but it is also a more general and slower moving phenomenon. Already in 1959, I mean in, in the sociological imagination, C. Wright Mills commented that the sociological imagination was being transported into many other fields of cultural production. Okay? I mean I cannot understand society if I isolate myself from the society. Okay? That, that, then, then this is a this is a more reflexive position because I am also a part of that society to make sense of the society, our economy, our culture, our polity, and so on. Okay. I I, I want to remind you uh, uh, at, at this point that that the substantive definition of sociology uh, that we have adopted uh, excludes. Uh, a purely disciplinary emphasis here to the extent uh, 
uh, to the to the extent uh, that non academics um, uh, have have concerned themselves with the sociological problematic that they become sociologists. For example, Marx. Marx was uh, not an uh, uh, in in the strict disciplinary disciplinary sense. It, he was not uh, a part of academic world. Okay, I mean uh, to uh, to put it succinctly. Okay, uh, sociology as a social activity um, arises precisely um, at the point where sociological thinking becomes a need felt by individuals, whether or not they go on to develop an academic discourse on the matter. Okay. I mean, I mean, therein lies the significance of philosophical and sociological thinking. Okay, uh, there is then a general increase in in social reflexivity, and and this is one of the characteristic features of modernity. Okay, you will you will uh, recognize this if you think of the transition from from uh, religious or other norms. Uh, as one from their apparently natural or certainly taken for granted uh, status to a situation where they become external roles that we play in a more or less consciously cynical manner to one where they are questioned in philosophical terms, where their existence is explained in terms of a theory of society and where they are replaced by a way of living that we feel we have chosen for ourselves. Then, 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 then it is, it is it is very important to uh, understand that the, that that the way we use social reflexivity i mean i mean it it did, uh, it refers to a transition from uh, religious or other norms as one from their apparently natural and certainly taken for granted status earlier uh, uh, in the pre modern uh, era when i say pre modern era i mean pre enlightenment era uh, pre-industrial revolution era. Okay. I mean religion and certain other norms, value systems, okay. they, were, they were considered natural, they were considered taken for granted status. I mean, but, 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 but social reflexivity in the lens of, of critical modernist paradigm in sociology. Okay replaces this taken for granted status of religion and other norms and values to a situation where they become external roles that we play in a more or less consciously cynical manner to one where they are questioned in philosophical and sociological terms, where their, ex, where their uh, existence is explained in terms of a theory of society and when and where they are replaced by a uh, way of living that we feel uh, uh, we have chosen for ourselves. Okay? This is very important. Then and which in any case needs uh, uh, I mean I mean I mean if if I say that where they were they are replaced by a way of living that we feel we have chosen for ourselves uh, I mean which in any case needs far more ideological work to maintain on our own part than pre-modern ways of thinking. Many other ideas of reflexivity exist and we will come to them, uh, 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 we'll, we'll come to them uh, in, in, uh, during the course in the lectures to follow, okay? when we will be discussing uh, more and more on, uh, on the ways different streams of thought have, uh, have uh, worked on modernity either directly or indirectly. Sociological practice, okay, then is reflexive in nature, and this reflexivity, okay, is both to be traced back to modernity and becomes a constituent element of modernity. Okay, social reflexivity, however, implies that society, okay, society itself comes to know uh, itself uh, and to create itself on the basis of this knowledge, and this approach leads us uh, i mean i mean this 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 social practice which which i said uh, is a reflexive one 
and this reflexivity is both to be traced back to modernity and becomes a constituent element of modernity. I mean such social reflexivity, I mean so social, uh, I mean I mean society itself comes to know itself and to create itself on the basis of this knowledge about social reflexivity and this approach leads us in two directions, one is rationality and the other uh, social movements. We will go one by one, okay. first there is the there is the development of what we call uh, uh, rationality, uh, this, is a, this is a critical theme, uh, this, is a, this is a central theme in the self understanding of modern society, uh, I mean in other words in sociology. And, and society is variously said to be rational in a number of uh, different senses to be proceeding towards rationality okay, uh, or to be something which can be brought to rationality, I mean nearing very close to rationality. Okay. It will be apparent that despite the, the, the negative loading, um, uh, the word rationality has uh, acquired uh, and the positive loading of reflexivity, the two concepts in fact uh, presuppose one another. Okay? I mean, what are those two concepts? No, one is understanding, and and uh, this, and secondly, um, uh, application of understanding. Okay, okay. I mean, rationality in you know uh, as a whole refers to res, uh, re, uh, re, uh, what is rationality which is based on reason, self understanding of modern society and application of understanding. Okay. There are two, two important elements okay, uh, uh, which must be kept in mind uh, that, that uh, they are uh, uh, understanding and not only understanding, but also the application of that understanding. Okay. Okay. That is why that is why rationality is also however, a description of the ways in which we attempt to understand society, okay. not simply pragmatically, not in terms of everyday common sense, not religiously, not inarticulately. Okay. The claim of I mean I mean I mean the claim of sociology and of modernity at this point are not to be distinguished, are not to be distinguished I mean I mean I mean the claim of sociology and of course on of modernity is that society can be understood in terms of reason and this is fairly obviously a black box definition of rationality it says what it touch okay but not what it is that is why rationality is that what it does not what it is okay then then its its thinking capacity is more important than its existence that is why uh, Descartes said no René Descartes the, the, the founder of rationalist philosophy of science that, that I think therefore I am I doubt therefore I am cogito ergo sum I, I, I think I doubt I interrogate I question therefore I am my, my entire existence is contingent upon the ways I think this is what rationality as, uh, in terms of uh, uh, Cartesian ph philosophy of science. Okay. In, in fact, the descriptions that I have, I have given you, uh, we have discussed earlier uh, about holism and holism or totality on the one hand and reflexivity on the other, as well as what I am going to say about social movements, okay. I mean are equally black box accounts. Although this may be less obvious, this is because of the nature of the modernist paradigm itself and it is a statement, it is obviously a statement of what the important problem areas are, not a resolution of this, of those problems. So, these, so these descriptions, okay. so these descriptions are in effect questions which modernist approaches set out to answer. We will come across a number of different ways of thinking about what rationality is in the lectures to follow is during the course. Okay. 
then if I say if I as I have already said that the society itself comes to know itself and to create itself on the basis of this knowledge on social reflexivity and this approach leads us two directions one is rationality and the other social movements then then if 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 rationality is what it does uh, and not it is uh, and rationality suggests that society can be understood in terms of reasoning capacity in terms of understanding and not only understanding but also the application of understanding then what do social movements signify the 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 other implication of the statement that that modern society at least is self knowing and self creating is that uh, we need to specify what this implies outside the narrow field of academic sociology. What I want to argue here is that just as there is an everyday sociological imagination, okay, uh, uh, there is an everyday sociological practice too. What is that everyday sociological practice? I mean it, it refers to a practical attempt to understand and transform society as a whole. I mean I not only attempt to understand society, but also attempt to transform society. Okay? That is why uh, once, once um, and then uh, in uh, the in, in thesis on, uh, on far back Marx wrote uh, the philosophers have only interpreted the world in various ways the point however is to change it that is why uh, it does not imply that he he uh, does not uh, uh, attach significance to uh, interpretation interpretation is important understanding is very important but how to change the society how to change our economy how to change our culture how to change our polity okay that is very important to us okay this is this is the the most important form that this 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 exercise of understanding and transforming the society as a whole takes and a characteristic feature of modernity is that of social movement okay we not only know we we not only make an attempt to know ourselves but also create ourselves okay these are conventionally divided into old and new social movements primarily to start with class movements i mean i mean primarily meaning uh, the the workers movements and news on the one hand and new social movements on the other which is normally specified to mean the women's movements ecological movements peace movements environmental movements although in practice most theories are developed with the ecology movement in mind in the sociological paradigm of modernity social movements are classically seen as the link between agency and structure they define social formations in the, in that modernity capitalism post industrialism or whatever can be arguably derived as a theory from the observation of its characteristic movements for example of citizenship of class of knowledge and so on. this is this is not only because social movements come from particular types of social relations of production, but also because they create new forms of social relations. This is very important. Okay? Okay. They are not only the indicator of the nature of the society that formed them, they are themselves uh, involved in reshaping the society. When I say they are involved, who, who all are involved? I mean both agency as well as structure in layman's language agency is is nothing but individual action social action structure i mean it's a society as a whole okay when i say this okay when i say that no we must try to define social formation by linking agency with structure these movements as practical sociology have 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 um, I uh, have a key interaction with with academic sociology and and I have already argued that that many of it not most of the classic social social theorists 
have been practically or intellectually engaged with the social movements of that day. In other words, social movements like society itself or any individual social actor are both the objects of knowledge as well as creators of knowledge. I mean self knowing as well as self creating. Okay? I mean, I mean what we do okay, in, in this lecture what we have, we have, we have done, we have quickly, um, we have uh, tried to capture the central themes, the critical themes, critical set of ideas uh, which are very much embedded in the modernist, critical modernist paradigm in sociology. Okay. We, we, we started with holism or totality, okay. uh, then we discussed uh, reflexivity, then we discussed uh, uh, rationality and now social movements. Okay. These, these four ideas holism or totality, reflexivity, rationality and social movements represent fields of intellectual conflict within the critical modernist paradigm in sociology. And, and, and competing theories offer different concepts to fill these fields. And not only, not only competing theories offer uh, different concepts to fill these fields, but also they provide um, uh, competing theories also provide different answers to these, these questions. And critics to modernism in, uh, on the other hand argue that the questions themselves are the wrong ones and offer alternative ways of defining the problem and even alternative problems. It is these modernist and anti-modernist responses to these questions answering the question or rejecting it or proposing a new one okay, that we will be looking at uh, in this course. Okay. This, is, this is extremely important to, to understand uh, the basic phenomenon uh, of of uh, or or the basic or the central uh, pillars of modernity or critical modernist paradigm in sociology. Once you once we tend to look at this, okay, okay, uh, there, 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 there is there is I mean if if there is the, this is a debate on these are uh, these are different debates on modernity. We are trying to debate the controversies which are very much. Uh, involved in 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 in, uh, 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 in the construction of modernity. Okay, okay. Then there is there is if we have to question uh, first of all we we have to mention. Uh, let me let me uh, mention it very quickly that uh, even these central pillars of modernity may be questioned. What constitutes modernity? What are the central pillars of modernity they themselves be will be questioned. There is also a scope to interrogate the interrogator, there is also a scope to reject all the options, there is also a scope to, to provide alternatives, there is also a scope to, to, to pose questions to the answers already given. Okay. Then there is an ambiguity of, of, of rationality and control, I mean in a way there is an ambiguity, governance and emancipation. Okay. I want to make one last remark about, about the, the paradigm that I have just discussed. At the end of the 20th century, I mean in, and the beginning of the 21st century, this century, we are accustomed to think of, the, we are accustomed to thinking of rationality in negative terms and to identifying with uh, identifying rationality with instrumental rationality what is that instrumental rationality okay it is the rationality instrumental rationality refers to the rationality of defining means to meet certain ends and and this is the this is the sense in which we say rationalization uh, and mean unemployment okay this is, this is interesting. I mean, in itself, what this critic points to is the extreme success of this particular mode of rationality. It can be applied successfully to virtually any end, any goal. Instrumental rationality okay, is, is conventionally uh, uh, 
opposed to substantive rationality, a rationality of ends rather than means or more exactly a way of thinking and doing things which is rational is its result in its results, but not necessarily in its methods. Substantive ras rationality aims at the means to achieve an end. What may be now uh, what are what should be the, the, the methods that we must follow. Okay. Gandhi followed substantive rationality as well as instrumental rationality both. His, he, for him the means are as important as ends whereas, substantive rationality uh, emphasizes more on means instrumental rationality emphasizes more on uh, uh, ends, goals, objectives, aims and so on. Okay. We will we'll discuss instrumental rationality a little longer when we discuss Max Weber's reflection on or Max Weber's typology of social action. Okay. He discussed four types of social action, one uh, uh, traditional social action, two uh, affective or emotive social action, three uh, value oriented social action and fourth goal oriented social action and goal oriented social action is alternatively known as instrumental rationality. Okay? Okay? The and, and substantive rationality always attempts to make a critique to critique of uh, tries to bring about a critique to instrumental rationality and the weakness in this simple critique of instrumental rationality is that it is in uh, philosophical terms uh, a purely idealist one. It assumes that a particular set of ideas or a particular way of thinking produces a particular social reality. What those ideas produce? What do these those ideas produce? Is that, that, that particular set of ideas or a particular way of thinking it produces a particular social reality then what those particular ideas produce? What those particular ideas produce however, is geared to certain ends and the content of those ends and their sociological origins are often left out of sight. Thus, we treat the, the, uh, the, we treat, uh, the cases of um, uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Okay, as examples of instrumental rationality, but the goals for which these were instruments on the one hand the assertion of ethnic identity at the expense of all those defined as outsiders a definition which for all practical purposes remains a key part of federal German law on nationality okay. or the intention of defeating Japan prior to the entry of the Soviet Union into the war in the east. I mean introducing a logic of containing communism which remained operative up to and including the introduction of cruise missiles to Europe are often taken for granted. And this critique, this critique of instrumental rationality becomes more serious when it is combined with the argument that scientific discourses are discourses of governance, that they contribute to the definition of problems the organization of relations of power and thus to the uh, control of their subjects. This critique of, of instrumental rationality makes the critique of instrumental reason that much more substantial by, by specifying the origin of the substantively irrational definition uh, of aims reason in the service of domination and exploitation. Okay? This is this is this is this, this has been the negative contribution of sociological thinking to modernity, most visibly perhaps perhaps in the discourse on modernization, which which I have already uh, 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 which I have already brought about a critique to. I mean I mean what needs to be said is this is the following. I mean I mean sociology, and and in particular its rationality is certainly not neutral technology, but rather it is structured in the service of power. That is why technology is not neutral. See, uh, uh, whether a technology is neutral or not, it all depends on upon, upon the way 
a specific technology has been designed and that specific technology is controlled. Okay. Neutrality of a technology depends on design and control. Okay. The way uh, public roads in India are, uh, are constructed designed I think they are anti pedestrian not now to do, I mean not now, but uh, historically. Okay. Uh, whenever we talk about technology or uh, um, machines or so, they have the way it is structured, it is structured in the service of power. In contemporary for, for, for example, uh, let me give you an example from Europe suppose. Okay. Uh, uh, in, in contemporary Ireland suppose, uh, this, this tends to mean a close link with the institutions of the welfare state and a perspective which typically combines a radical rhetoric of outrage with a practical reformism which double uh, whose double aims uh, are combined. What are those double aims, double objectives? I mean to make the system work better and to improve the conditions of those affected by the system and the net and the net effect of this, this combine uh, of course, is to extend uh, the relations of domination, uh, subjugation and exploitation subject and also subjects. Okay. The improvements in people's conditions of existence brought about by this kind of top down activity are improvements in terms of the dominant relations of production and not necessarily in terms of those uh, people's own definition of their own needs. I mean an extreme variant of this logic was the American definition uh, of, of this kind of rationality in the 1960s and 1970s uh, of the needs of the Vietnamese in terms of subjugation of a, to a right wing rather than a left wing dictatorship, even at the cost of the lives of the people in question. A, a milder example of the same logic is the administrative definition of the needs of travelers in terms of integration into the sedentary uh, community and reforms in health, education, housing or social welfare, which are improvements in terms of this administrative definitions of needs, but not necessarily in terms of the travelers own definition of their own needs. Okay. This is the major, major uh, 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 funding alternative uh, to uh, marketing research, uh, whose substantive irrationality I am taking for granted. What I want to suggest in opposition to gen the generalized critique of instrumental uh, rationality or instrumental reason is that this is precisely what happens when sociology becomes an instrument in the hands of the state. Okay. One must remember that uh, we cannot afford to make our discipline whether it is sociology or, or political science or philosophy or uh, literature or science age engineering. Okay. Uh, humanities and social sciences, okay. we, we should not let them uh, be at the service of the state always, not simply service, but at the beck and call of the state. Okay. No, we should not do that. Okay. The alternative, then what is the alternative? The alternative that it, that, 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 that it implies a radical restructuring of the nature of the sociological technology involved so that it becomes uh, becomes a convivial technology in in Ivan Illich's uh, uh, terminology. Uh, that is precisely the link with social movements. In this case, the use of social theory to articulate alternative needs and alternative possibilities for their satisfaction. The ambiguities. What I say the ambiguity of rationality and control I mean governance versus emancipation. Okay. The ambiguities involved in this case are clear, but a sociological practice determined by an interaction with the central institutions of exploitation and domination in welfare state capitalism faces uh, 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 ambiguities of quite a different order. Okay. This sociology such 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 practice of sociology does not uh, cease to be rational or indeed reflexive or nor does it cease to be involved in power relations. Such, such, such sociology as practice or such, such practical sociology, okay. it, it, is, it does not cease to be rational, does not stop to be rational, it does not stop to be 
reflexive, it does not stop to be involved in power relations. Any social movement is at least in part an exercise in hegemony in Gramscian sense. Antonio Gramsci uh, who is uh, who was the founder of the communist party of Italy. Uh, he wrote in uh, free pre in his present notebooks. I am using uh, uh, the concept of hegemony in Gramscian sense uh, and, and thus uh, I mean any, any social movement is at least in part an exercise in hegemony and thus involves the organization of power via through intellectual and cultural domination. However, social movements are also and to a degree unknown in capitalist forms or the state movements towards emancipation. We need governance, but we also, but, but what is more important? What do we get with good governance? Good governance cannot be bereft of the idea of emancipation, freedom. Okay? Okay? That is why I, I, I repeat social movements are also and are also to, to, to a uh, 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 to a, a degree unknown in capitalist forms or the state okay, movements towards emancipation and there is an appropriation of sociological thought by all those involved rather than simply by the elite. This, this interaction with social movements, okay, this interaction with social movements uh, and as far as I can see only this interaction is what keeps us becoming managers and civil servants. It is also what keeps sociology from degenerating into the positivism uh, and lack of reflexivity that characterizes what Raymond Williams describes as a basic orientation to the world as available raw material which treats nature, other people and finally, the self as the objects of domination and subordination and exploitation. If, if if the primary source of positivist modernism is common sense as, as the ideology of uh, relationships of domination, then the primary source of critical modernism lies directly or indirectly in the theory and practice of social movements which challenge this domination. Okay? Now, in this lecture what we have done, what we have discussed in this lecture, we have discussed the central uh, pillars of modernity, I mean the central pillars in the cr critical uh, modernist paradigm in sociology, okay, holism or totality, uh, reflexivity, rationality and social movements. And then we, we, we in, in light of, in the light of these, these four central philosophical and political foundations of modernity, namely holism or totality, reflexivity, rationality and social movements. We have tried to encapsulate the, the ambiguity of, of rationality and control governance versus emancipation. What we talk of rationality uh, is, is precisely instrumental rationality, but, but uh, uh, keeping, keeping, keeping the spirit of keeping the, the spirit of the dialectic or the dialectical relationship between substantive rationality and instrumental rationality, I mean substantive rationality aims towards uh, means or methods uh, and whereas, instrumental rationality aims towards ends, results, goals, aims, objectives and so on. In the, in the next lecture, we will start with the classic statements of sociological modernism uh, in through the works of Marx and Weber. Thank you.